Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Grant Fortner. Hi Grant! Hey Joanna, thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you on the show. Just a little introduction. Grant is a novelist and flash fiction writer, the executive director of NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, and the co-founder of 100wordstory.org. And today's going to be very cool, but, but Grant, start by telling us a bit more about you and your writing background. Yeah, I think uh, I was somehow strangely destined to be a writer. I remember like going to bookstores with my parents when I was a kid, and I would I would just go over and stare at the journals and the pens, you know, and they, you know they'd lose me, but just find me there. Um, and then I, you know, when I, when I was twenty, I decided to be a writer, and there was no looking back. I graduated from college with absolutely no plan B, you know. Uh, I was rolling the dice, putting it on the line, and um, you know, uh, kind of kind of uh, got my MFA in writing here in San Francisco. And pursued, you know, sort of the traditional course, you know, learning how to write a short story, then graduating to a novel. It's so strange for me to say this because nowadays with NaNoWriMo, I meet like 18 year olds who've not only written five or six novels, they've also published them. So I feel like I was moving at a glacial pace as a writer mm. in the pre NaNoWriMo days. Um, but yeah, you know, I've always been dedicated to fiction writing. Uh, eventually, I had to come up with a plan B and, and earn a living somewhere there in my late 20s. And so I, um, I taught, uh, taught writing at the community college level and the college level. I worked in journalism. I worked in corporate communications. And then fortunately, I found my professional home with the National Writing Project um, uh, several years ago. And that National Writing Project is dedicated to, to helping teachers teach writing better. And that led me to National Novel Writing Month, which is just down the street. I met Chris Beatty and, um, you know, asked him, you know, if I could get involved and volunteer because I thought it was such an amazing organization, especially after the first time I did it. I did National um, partly because I, I, I was stuck in a rut as a writer. I felt like I was just repeating all my old habits. And I was like, who, who decided on this? Did, did I decide on my creative writing process or did it decide on me? And so NaNoWriMo was a, a, a fantastic way to kind of experiment. And I, and I, by doing it, I found all these other, you know, other creative possibilities that weren't available to me beforehand. So, so yeah, you know, one, the thing with writing is one thing just kind of leads into another in this way you can't sometimes explain. So somewhere in there as a parent, a busy working parent, I started writing shorter and shorter stuff as well. Um, and that's what led me to 100 Word Story. Um, and, and there was no website on the internet that featured 100 Word Stories, exactly 100 words. So I figured, why not start one? No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Um, so I guess for anyone who might not know, what is yeah. NaNoWriMo? And, you know, tell, yeah, uh, let's, let's tell people a bit more about NaNoWriMo, how it got started, what is it, how's it changed over the years? Yeah, it's funny because so many people do NaNoWriMo, I always just expect they know what it is. And then when you ask a question like that, I'm like, no, not everyone in the world knows what NaNoWriMo is. Uh, but most writers do in some sense now. Um, to, to give you some history, it started kind of unofficially in 1999. I, I mean, unofficially meaning not as a, a nonprofit or a movement. Uh, the founder, Chris Beatty, basically woke up one day and said, I want to write a novel. How do you go about this? And instead of buying a lot of how to write novel books or signing up for a writer's workshop or going to an MFA program, he looked at his bookshelf and picked out one of the, the more slender novels mm -hmm. uh, or several of them, you know, think like Catcher in the Rye. Uh, and he tallied up the words to be 50,000 words, and he thought that was doable in a month. And so he uh, invited – Chris is a very um, – you know, social guy. So he invited 20 people to join him, and they met after work in Berkeley's cafes um, and wrote together. And this started, you know, really, it's it's interesting to me because that basic framework of writing with other people um, really defines who we are today, too, even though we had nearly 500,000 people sign up for all of our programs last year. So those 20 people, they met in cafes, and that helped them uh, be accountable, you know, mm. because if somebody didn't show up, um, Chris or one of the, his other friends would call him up and say, where were you today? You know, um, so they had to be accountable and show up or they would feel like, you know, that, that, that there's that thing. Like if you want to create a new habit, the best way to, to do it is to announce it to your friends because they'll hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. And then they did this interesting thing where they, they would challenge each other. You know, so they would competitively say, OK, we're going to write for 10 minutes and whoever, you know, writes the most words will win a latte. 
you know. And so we do that today. We have word sprints that are on the on Twitter, you know, going 24 hours a day during NaNoWriMo. And in our live write-ins, which with municipal liaison hosts, we have a thousand volunteers around the world who host live writing gatherings. They do things like this too. So it's it's a way to motivate people and keep the mo writing moving forward. And then they did this other thing too. They would um, let me see. So they would. Um, do a test that say you have to write a thousand words before you know for four or five hundred words whatever it is before you can go to the bathroom and and, and this today especially <laughs> those people who won the latte in the first exercise that's the, you know it's it's one of the most motivating things for any writer to do so if you're having problem moving your 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 novel forward give yourself a challenge like that yeah, and I, it's interesting because, you know, I, I do credit NaNoWriMo. 2009, I did NaNoWriMo. Right. I, I made, I think, 27,000 words I managed. But, Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Because the aim is 50,000, right? But, um, right. you know, I did 27,000 of, and I'd never written, uh, you know, fiction since high school. And the kernel of that 27,000 words, like that whole 27,000 words didn't make it into the novel, but the story that I came up for, with is yeah. what became Stone of Fire, which was my first novel. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah, a couple of years later, and now I've got like 11. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's kind of the start, but I wonder if you could talk about why do you think that putting a deadline and a limit around these things helps people to write? How does that actually work? Yeah, I mean, I th we, we have this saying that a goal and a deadline are creative midwives, you know, and I think so many writers, um, you know, I mean, I, for instance, when, when I first was setting out to write a novel, I'm one of these writers who will write a first chapter or maybe two chapters and I will endlessly go back and keep, keep rewriting that and keep thinking I have to get it perfect before moving on, you know, and so that that beginning part of the novel can get so much attention like i always say even if i do finish a novel like it's like it's like 60% of my attention is on the beginning, you know, maybe 25% on the middle, and then just a scant little bit at the end, you know. And so I think like NaNoWriMo, by having that deadline, it really, it really forces, it gives you an urgency. Um, I think um, it, it, you know, other, otherwise I think people can, can kind of dally through their novel for years and think that they're really working hard on it. But, you know, if you really tally up the time, it's not moving forward. And so NaNoWriMo is all about that, that moving forward. And as you said earlier, um, so many of those words you write, they don't end up in your, your final draft, and they're not really supposed to. I mean, writing a rough draft is largely this imaginative exercise. You're exploring worlds. You're taking risks. And so to write 50,000 words in a month and only 30 days, it, it puts that pressure on you. You know, you have mm. to keep moving things forward. And that, I, I think there's a great creative principle there because you're, you're, you're less attached to your words they're less precious and so just you just write and get it out and then you know you're going to rewrite later um, but you're going to explore the story in interesting ways yeah absolutely and so i think it's is it one six six seven per day if you want to be precise yes yeah one, so, seven, okay seven, so, so i was around 1700 yeah so say get 17 can't yeah, yeah, exactly. So 1700 a day, um, or yeah, you, you bulk it up at the weekend and kind of, you know, yeah, see, see what good. happens. Yeah. So um, what are your tips for people, you know, like you mentioned, you're a busy parent, um, yeah. you know, what are your tips for writers to actually get that number of words done per day? Yeah. Well, the most, when I talk about NaNoWriMo to people and tell them about it, the number one thing that people tell me is, oh, I'm too busy for that. You know, but the thing is, is that NaNoWriMo is designed for busy people. You know, every single person on the planet thinks they're busy. You know, <laughs> even people who don't work, who have lavish incomes, they all, they think they're busy, you know, no matter what they're doing. And so we all have to like kind of reckon with that. You know, Nan NaNoWriMo teaches us time management, which is one of these crucial skills for writing novels that is vastly under underrated and not talked about. So, I mean, I think the first thing is, is like, I always tell people to go on a time hunt, you know, beforehand, like in October. Like literally keep track of how you spend time for an entire week, you know, every 15 minutes or half an hour, uh, whether, you know, tally how much time you spend on Facebook or Twitter, uh, tally how much time you spend on Netflix, tally how much time you spend, uh, you know, during lunch at work. Like, like, and, and what I find um, is that people find all of these nooks and crannies of time that are sort of like, 
not used for any great creative purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and so for one month, you can think about, well, maybe I don't go on social media for a month. Uh, maybe I say no to going out on Friday nights for a month. You know, you, you carve out time so that you can make it possible to write a novel. And I think I think we all, you know, it's, it's, it's not a judgment, but we all sort of allow our lives, you know, they, it, a lot of things feel urgent and necessary, but if we really think about them, a lot of them aren't urgent and necessary. Mm -hmm. And writing a novel is urgent and necessary so it's about it's about you know if you want we have a saying too like if you want to get something done ask a busy person to do it yeah I think I think you're right there and I, I was also thinking that when I did NaNoWriMo um, preparing in advance so that you yeah. can start writing on day one was a really big deal so how do you suggest mm -hmm. people prepare for NaNoWriMo well, we, we're not prescriptive. We like NaNoWriMo is a wide open creative experiment, and it's been interesting to watch the variety of ways that people approach it every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always think, like you said, it's good to be prepared, you know, and, and you have to figure out what the right level of preparation is for you, you know. So we always have this kind of active debate among our participants. There are the planners who who really need to have that plot really precisely outlined, you know, mm -hmm. and deeply thought through. And that, that works great for some people. It happens not to work great for a lot of people. Like, yeah. like, like I have to not know where my story is going literally from the beginning, because writing a rough draft is, is an exploration for me. I'm, I'm trying to find the story in the words. And so the, yeah, the other camp are the pantsers, you know? And so we'll have people like literally hands on the keyboard, you know, midnight on October 31st, ready to go. And sometimes they don't even know what they're going to write, you know? And so those are the two, the, the, whole, the spectrum there. Uh, I think generally like the people who are successful are somewhere in the middle. Mm. Um, I think uh, I always say that it's good to let your ideas marinate in October, uh, to take some notes, to think about who your characters are, to kind of like just just start letting things like flow through your through your brain and, and having ideas percolate. And then I think you're I mean, for me, this is how I do it. Um, then I'm, I'm ready to go on November 1st, but I'm not I'm not like cornered by an outline. You know, I can I can I can go in any direction. Yeah, I think I'm the same. I mean, like I didn't have when I did it then and still my process now, I don't have an outline, but I do yeah. know who my characters are. I do know what the first scene is going to be. And I think that's a big deal. What you don't want on that first day is the blank page and no idea. Like if you're someone who's, you know, yeah. this is the first time the blank page can be quite bad. But if you know, like, this person is in this place, and they're going to do this. That's kind of, I guess, what you need to know, isn't it on day one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think just getting started and not, and you know, we, we, I mean, one big, you know, our advice is really pretty simple. Part of it is banish your inner editor, mm. you know, and so that's the way, like, like, you, you know, you're, the gusts of inspiration are only going to take you so far. So that first day of NaNoWriMo, you might be feeling like, like this, you know, the wind's just blowing you forward, you know, uh, but that inspiration is going to fade out pretty quickly. Um, and so then you have to like, um, I think one thing when you're talking about tips is you have to account for those, those, those days that you just don't want to write, you know, and, but I think this is how you learn to be a writer. Mm -hmm. Those days you don't want to write, you still show up. It's like, I always say that NaNoWriMo is one part boot camp, one part party you know you are the boot camp part is you're training yourself to be a writer you're training yourself to show up every day and be creative even on bad days um but you know we also have like celebratory aspects and we make nano writing a novel fun also so mm, yeah, yeah absolutely and i mean one of the things uh is the sharing aspect of word counts, which, yeah. you know, for, again, some people, I mean, I must say, because I only made that first year 20,667 or whatever it was in in one month, I was feeling like, oh, my goodness, all these people are, you know, so far ahead of me. And that public sharing was quite difficult. So why is, ah. the, why is the public sharing of word counts so, so emphasised and so important? You know, I, I think it's emphasised, it's just so natural. It's, it is almost like a greeting. You know, when, when I see NaNoWriMo, people see each other. That their first question, other than "How are you doing?" and it might even be before "How are you doing?" It's like, "What's your word count?" It's a point of curiosity. Uh, I think like NaNoWriMo has, you know, we are fundamentally a, an organization of encouragement and empowerment, mm -hmm. and I think that's a big part of it. So, so however that takes its form, like when you kept saying, "I only wrote twenty-seven thousand words," and you felt, I don't know, you.
you were envious or you felt shamed by the people who had written more. You know, so I think the word count can be motivating on a lot of different levels. I would never say that you only wrote 27,000 words. I'd say that's <laughs> tremendous. And if you write yeah. 27,000 words in November, that's something like 300,000 words a year, which is amazing. Mm. So, um, I, so I think it has that play. It's just like a discussion. And I think um, you can be really motivated by those people who are ahead of you. Sometimes they, they will, you know, if, if somebody like, writes all day Saturday and catches up and goes beyond their word count target, you know, that's really motivating because you're like, if they can do it, I can do it too. Mm. And we have all of these NaNoWriMo heroic stories, like people, you know, have signed up on November 15th, you know, mm. and they- Wasn't still, there one guy who did like it in a day or something? There are people who do it in a day. I don't understand how they physically or mentally do it, but they can, you know? And so, so it's interesting. And, I, and when I say that NaNoWriMo is a creative experiment, I think that's part of it. You know, you're, you're figuring out even your your own your own like like not only when you like to write or your own writing habits or what boundaries you can push but you're you know your your pace as a writer like i happen to be like a very slow writer and and in some ways that's why nanorimo really helps me i happen to be a writer who hates writing rough drafts and again nanorimo really hates helps me with that mm. so yeah so the word count you know just, yeah, How can just, you not talk about your word count in November, essentially? Yeah. <laughs> it's like on your mind because you've got to hit 50,000 words. Yeah, and I think it's become, certainly in the genre fiction space, it's very normal to share your word count in general. And I will yeah. often these days share my word count on Twitter or with my readers, you know, right. when I'm getting closer to a, to a number. So I think that's become more normal. Um, but... I'm interested with you as, you know, coming from a MFA sort of literary tradition um, and one of the biggest uh, sort of criticisms of NaNoWriMo is, oh, this is just getting all these random people to put out books in a yeah. month. So, how, you know, wh what do you say to people who criticise NaNo over that? Well, that's, 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 it's really too bad that people criticise it on that level, you <laughs> no. know, um, because, you know, we are about... Um, energizing people to be creative to realizing their creative potential that's why we exist you know like i would never tell people they shouldn't dance on friday nights because we have too many people dancing in the world already or we already have professional dancers you know um and i think writing a novel serves that purpose you know it's like people a lot of people come to NaNoWriMo and they don't necessarily they're not writing to get published you know mm. i think a lot of people make that assumption that it's all about everyone's everyone's going for the best seller but so many of our people uh, gather just because they like being creative and writing with other people you know they like to explore their imagination in that way mm. and 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 we we you know our mantra is is that everyone has a story to tell and that everyone's story matters and so there's so many different levels of meaning that happen when you write a story whether you want to be a bestseller or just want to write and so i think everyone in the world should write a novel you oh, know me too. I don't think we can have enough novels in the world. Um, I don't think we can have enough dancers in the world. I don't think we have enough improv actors in the world. You know, like like these are things that are being creative uh, is 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 a primary way of being a human being. You know, so when I hear those critiques, I find them really dispiriting and unnecessary. And I don't think they understand NaNoWriMo either. Like mm. we're not we're not telling people to try to publish their their rough draft. You know, we're trying to ignite their creativity. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I, I'm saying the people who say this at the moment as well, criticising self-publishing, you know, taking it a bit further. Um, you yeah. know, I, I say for every person who wants to write a novel and actually starts writing, the number of books they buy goes up. Exactly. So if every person wrote a novel, everyone would buy more books and that makes everyone happy. <laughs> exactly. And I would say, you know, like I, uh, I won't name the grantor, but they, they sometimes say that we're not really furthering literary excellence. Mm. And my comeback is like 500,000 people writing novels is like, I can't think of a better way to further literary excellence. You know, mm -hmm. those people go back and they're, they're better uh, parents as a result. They're better students. They're better managers. They're better employees, you know, being creative. Um, you know, like, like when you have that in your life, you, 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 you know, you, you, you change the world in important ways. Yeah. And, and, you know, as I said, for me, it went, I went from someone who said, um, and I think the timing of this interview is great because we're quite early for November, but yeah. I, I actually, it was on a podcast in 2000, July 2009, when someone said to me, why don't you do NaNoWriMo? What, you know, because I said, oh, I could never write fiction. And ah. yeah, so and doing it that year basically changed my life. So yeah. And, and I, but I had to think about it. Like I got the idea in July 
oh, I could do that. I'd never heard of that before. And then by the time November came, I was like raring to go. So, I, you know, I want to encourage people listening now that what you've said, this is just about creativity and you don't know what's going to come out of it. You know, it, you don't know what's going to happen with what you come up with. You can do it. And that's the key thing. What you said is that I can do it. You know, that's mm. why we try to foster what we try to foster. You don't have to be one of these wizened writers with an MFA. You don't have to do that. <laughs> you know, I mean, actually, like an MFA, I don't think it really furthers novel, learning how to write a novel that much because I think the best way to learn to write a novel is just like what Chris thought in 1999 is by doing it mm. and every novel you write is different than the previous novel every novel has its own learning curve and the only way to do that I mean you know there's that that popular concept that to gain mastery in anything you have to do it for 10,000 hours well what better way to start that than in NaNoWriMo which is basically a training ground to show up every day and write and to reach those 10,000 hours mm. so you got a story you can do it doesn't matter who you are yeah, and I love that. It is a very encouraging um, organization. Um, and just coming back on the social thing, because that's yeah. the other thing. I remember, again, you know, back, back in 2009, I'd only been running my website for six months. I didn't know any authors. I'd started mm. to interview people on my uh, very early podcast in order to actually meet some people. But NaNoWriMo has a very big social aspect. So if people listening yeah. don't, don't have any author friends, um, right. How is NaNoWriMo so social? What are the things you, that go on? You know, I think people have a notion of authors as these solitary, angst-filled creatures. <laughs> and, and there's some truth to that, obviously. But, you know, I think there's, I think that when I said that the time management skills are an underrated part of being a successful novelist or writing, so are the communities. You know, like if you, if you look at every writer that you've read, I bet if you really look at their lives, they have a community of authors or creators who have helped them along their way. And so having a community is really important to what we do. And uh, so many people find their their writing community, their writing home with us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, our forums, for instance, like online on the nanorimo.org website, we get a million comments during the month of November. You know, they're they're very active and literally you can talk about it, every subject under the sun with creativity and writing. You can find people, people, if you ask a question, you will get answers right away. Uh, but then, you know, like social media explodes. So Twitter, our hashtag, hashtag NaNoWriMo is like trending throughout the month of November. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as I said earlier, like these word sprints where, where um, there's a NaNo word sprints account. And, you know, so these sprints, these challenges happen around the clock during November. And it's very social. And just like you said earlier, people will write to the prompt They'll share their word count. They'll share a sentence. Um, so it's all about bringing people together creatively. But beyond online, um, we do have uh, these thousand municipal liaisons I mentioned mm. uh, who are around the world, literally. Mm. Like they're, they're, they, they're, you know, uh, in the U.S., of course, but there, you know, we have Pakistan and and countries in Africa, and we've had people write in Antarctica before, you know. So, so people, people like, and and you know, like I think like, like per per like when I was saying that Chris, when he when he like met with his friends uh, in coffee shops, like like that's what the municipal liaisons do. They bring people together. Mm -hmm. People um, feel encouraged and empowered to write when they meet other writers who are at the same levels they are, um, and and it's motivating to show up and to have you know to to write with other people. They They've even done these studies that people feel more creative when they're even sitting next to strangers in cafes. So, yeah, we, we feel that the community takes a village to write a novel. Yeah, and I I should say as from my experience of doing that because I am I still write in cafes a lot and I yeah. dictate as well and I do. But when I tried this social writing, um, it, I think it's important for people to understand that when you go to a, a NaNoWriMo writing session, you go to say a cafe, but you actually sit there and write. It's not like a writer's group or like a book group where mostly yeah. people just chat. Actually, you go and everyone's quiet and they're writing. And then after say the hour is up, then you can chat, right? It is right. quite a controlled thing. Yeah, they're all different. Some of them, I mean, I think mainly, you're right, most of them you are sitting there writing, mm. and it can, you can almost feel like you're in a library. Um, and then some of them are more active. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, you know, again, like in, in these, these 
writing groups in November, a lot of them continue on and they meet year round, you know, so it's a great way, as you said, when you started this podcast to meet other writers, I think it's, it's so valuable to know and interact with other writers, whether you're sharing your stories with them or just like, you know, understanding each other, you know, like writers, when you say I am a writer to a lot of people, oftentimes you strangely don't get a lot of support for that. <laughs> you know, they say, how are you making, making a living or mm. have you published yet? Or, you know, or they say, oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is the worst response. But, you know, so people, you know, I think like having other writers that understand what you're going through is really important and, you know, can creatively support you in a variety of ways. And I forgot to mention we have a library program called mm. Come Right In. And so a thousand libraries also host these writing gatherings. So, you know, there are a variety of ways to connect with other writers. Oh, that's awesome. I might yeah. have to start something in Bath or I might see if there's already something yeah. in Bath. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that, be, that would be fun. But um, uh, so... Nano is really about first draft writing, as you said. It's it's about getting the words down. It's about not editing it. It's just about doing it. It's not right. about zero to publish novel. I know some people do talk about zero to publish novel in 30 days. Um, and it can be done, but I think when you are more developed as, a, an, as an author. So what do you recommend people do at the end of November? Say they yeah. have... 30,000 words or 50,000 words. What do they do then after November? Yeah, well, it depends on, on where they are in terms of their novel. We hope that they've at least, you know, we always say right to the end, it's good to finish mm -hmm. it, even if you have to be sketchy in some of the scenes leading up to that. Uh, and it depends on what their ambitions are for their novel. But we offer a program called I Wrote a Novel, Not What? And it's in January and February. And it, it's basically a large conversation about that now what? You know, so we provide uh, resource, resources on our blog. We have tweet chats with authors, editors, and agents. We host webcasts, you know, sometimes with self-publishing companies, just a whole, we try to cover the spectrum essentially mm -hmm. on what the next steps are. So we talk about revision, uh, we talk about finding your writing community or, or forming a writing group, uh, we talk about how to find an agent, we talk about all those different publishing pathways that are available to people. So it's largely just like, like educating people and, and trying to help them with those next steps. Yeah. Yeah. And as you're talking, I realize we haven't actually said that NaNoWriMo is free. It is free, yes. That's why we we'll say everyone has everyone has a story to tell, and everyone's story matters. We're not going to charge them ten dollars. Yeah, this is the thing. I know we've been talking about it for ages, and I'm like, actually, just everyone knows this is a free program, and you just register and it's join in, right? Yep, everyone can do it, and uh, you know we're a nonprofit, so we do have to like ask for donations. Mm. To, to make it all happen, you know, I mean, it, it takes a lot of, um, a lot of people think we're just a website, but being just a website for 500,000 people actually takes a lot of work and money. Yeah, um, and, yeah. we're, and we're not just a website. Like I said, we've got these thousand volunteers and libraries, and we also have a young writers program. Mm. Uh, where we have 100,000 teens sign up on the YWP, that's what we call it, um, website uh, to write novels just like they do with NaNoWriMo. And we send free classroom materials to 2,000 classrooms every year. And when I say free, they're free, and we pay shipping and handling to do that. You know, So we really are. We're, we're all about access to creativity, and we do, we do that as, as you know, keep, keep costs down as much as we can. Mm. And yeah. um, we're not going to talk about merchandise or anything, but I, you know, as someone who participates um, I, you know, when you're participating, you do feel like buying the T-shirt and yeah. and donating to the program because yeah. you're you're part of it. Um, but I just wanted to make sure people understood that they can join in. Um, yeah, yeah, just like that. Um, but you mentioned the Young Writers Program there, which I often refer people to. Um, yeah. Just tell us a bit more about that in case people have kids or friends or yeah. you know people. Yeah, you know, it operates largely like NaNoWriMo, uh, except that. Uh, uh, because we're dealing with like younger kids, they can they don't have to write fifty thousand words in a month. They can set their own word count goal. Like my daughter, who's in fifth grade, wrote ten thousand words last year. Um, and so you can do it independently. Any any teen can just sign up on the website and do it. And we're we're actually building a fantastic new website that we hope to launch this year. Um, and then there are there is I mean, um, our, some of our biggest success successes I think happen in the classroom. And so teachers have access to free workbooks. Um, we have this fantastic curriculum designed specifically for teaching novel writing, and it's not just in the month of November. Mm. It covers the whole school year, so it helps um, teachers teach kids how to prepare to write a novel, uh, write a novel in November, 
revise it, uh, work with other people. Um, and then in the end, like we, we usually work with the self-publishing company so that, that all the kids get a free copy of their novel, you know, which is fantastic because they're writing for an audience and they have to have a novel in your hand, no matter what age you are, it's always exciting. Mm. And so, you know, oftentimes those schools host readings. I'm actually going to a reading this Friday. Um, and what we find, you know, the Young Writers Program, we hear so many stories about kids who are the most reluctant writers, the kids who hate writing, or special needs kids, and they will do NaNoWriMo and have this huge breakthrough. They'll suddenly love writing, and, and it's always like, how do you explain that? Mm. And I think it's because, like, you know, we learn through our passions, right? That's the best way to learn anything. And instead of uh, kids sitting there in the classroom and, and feeling that, that red pen that's going to, you know, correct their grammar, that's important, but it's also important to, to learn that writing is like a fun, joyous, amazing experience. And so I think we give we give kids agency. They get to choose their topic. They get to dive in. They get to like, you know, the kids love that word count goal. You know, they love tracking that and tracking it with their classmates. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think and, and then once they do this, they write a novel at such a young age, I think they're just so empowered and confident about writing in a way that other, you know, projects can't really achieve that. Uh, writing a research paper, 10 page research paper is easy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I do, I do think that the that that initial reticence, that's what I think I had as well, which is because school teaches you that you have to write something literary, you know, you have to write yeah. something like Thomas Hardy or John Steinbeck or whatever. But actually, yeah. what if you want to write about aliens and spaceships or like I do, What's like blowing stuff up and killing yeah. people and, and all that stuff just not acceptable when you do English literature at school. And yeah. I think, you know, something like NaNoWriMo for kids and for adults it's like you're allowed to write whatever you want it doesn't have to be you know literature in fact it probably isn't <laughs> yeah no we don't work within those boundaries you know mm. I mean all all writing I, I I yeah we would never set up boundaries like that we want people <laughs> to be creative in all the you know you can be creative in so many different ways so we're not we're not mm. we, we we don't judge quality you know i mean quality happens when you when you do it and you practice and you yeah. know that happens across genres yeah absolutely okay yeah. so um oh one more thing on nano before i ask you just one more question about your own writing um but okay. uh, camp nano is coming yeah. up too so what, got, what is that how people i, I how wanted people to put that in because when you were saying that there's still time to think about doing nanorimo this november well there is this fantastic way to warm up to, camp, to NaNoWriMo, and that's in Camp NaNoWriMo. So Camp NaNoWriMo isn't like a, a physical camp, mm. you know. We don't have <laughs> cabins somewhere in Northern California where people are gathering. It's an online event, campnanowrimo.org. Um, and we, we, we designed it initially for people who couldn't do NaNoWriMo in November. So there's a session in April and there's a session in July. And it's basically just like NaNoWriMo, except it's a more open-ended and casual version. So people can, you, they, you don't have to write a novel, for instance. You can write a memoir, you can write a script, you can write a play, you can write an epic poem. Mm -hmm. uh, you can revise your novel. And so you set your own word count. You can also set your own word count goal. So it could be, you know, 500 words or 50,000 words or 100,000 words. And so it's much more, you know... Um, you know, open in that sense. Uh, but I do think it's a great warm up for NaNoWriMo. Like, like, and so we have this session in July and about 30,000 people will participate in July and I, and online, we don't have the municipal, municipal liaisons hosting live writing events in the summer, but you, you can form a cabin with, with, with your peers. So for instance, I will be in a cabin with 10 fellow writers and, and that swapping word count and, and writing tips happens within that cabin. So it's a more kind of intimate conversation. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to warm up and, um, and get ready and, and just kind of dip your toe into NaNoWriMo if you're thinking about it and haven't done it before. Fantastic. And um, then I also wanted to ask you, we've been talking about 50,000 words, but you oh. have a uh, hundred word story dot org. Yeah. And so how, how can you write a story in a hundred words? Yeah. <laughs> I always say I'm a very schizophrenic writer. I like to write long and I like to write short. Um, I really don't like there to be any boundaries. I think I think people sometimes writers put too many boundaries or write them around themselves. Like I only write sci-fi or I only write literary fiction. I mean, I think breaking down those boundaries uh, makes you a better writer. And so, a hundred words. It, it is a really interesting challenge. Like when I first started doing it, it was really random. I, I read. A friend of mine's uh, stories, he'd written 100, 100 word stories as a memoir, which I thought
thought was really interesting. Because when I think about my life, it's not like with this, you know, this, mm. this grand trajectory of a plot. Um, it's more of these little snapshots, these little moments uh, that are important. It's like a collage. And so I think 100 Word Stories are perfect for capturing those, those, little, those little moments that are very telling in our lives, but maybe don't warrant like a novel or even like a conventional short story. Um, but that said, like when I first started doing it, I would write maybe 150 or 170 words. And I was thinking, this is as short as I can go. And I told this friend of mine, I was like, ah, you know, more or less, it's close enough. And he was like, no, you've got to get it down to 100 words. <laughs> there's no like fibbing. There's no wiggle room there. It's exactly 100. And so I did it. I kept working. And it's really interesting what happens when you write for concision like that. You know, it really, you can develop a story arc in 100 words. You can have character change. Um, and it, it takes, I mean, it takes a lot of practice to do it, but it's a, it's a really interesting exercise. And I think like writing short like that is a really, uh, it, it, it informed, it's, an, it's improved my writing in a way that no other form has. Mm -hmm. um, because it teaches you that you can write a story through through hints. You can leave things out. Like, that's the thing. If you write a story in 100 words, it's not about what you include in those 100 words. It's largely about what you leave out, mm. what the reader senses and fills in with, the, uh, with uh, you know, their, their selves. Um, so, yeah, it's informed my novel writing. It helps me write with suspense. I leave more things out of, out of the story and see if I can carry it off. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, yeah I've, I've written short stories. I'm just writing a short story right now, and I've just written a screenplay, and I'm like, 100 words. I mean, yeah. it's... it's uh, So it only has one character in one scene? No, not necessarily. Does it have dialogue, or...? It can. It can have dialogue. You know, they've been written in so many different ways. I've, I, mean, I mean, I read... Every month we get, like, 300 submissions, so I've read thousands of them, and people well. take a whole, you know... Sometimes it can be only dialogue. Um, you know, it's, 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 they're almost, they can almost be like slices of life. They can be like prose poems, mm. uh, but they can also be more narrative and more like stories, you know. Mm. So, and people, takes... people can find those at 100wordstory.org. Exactly. Yeah. Think of, think of them like a, a, if, if a haiku is like the shortest style of poem, you know, I mean, think of a hundred word story as being like the haiku of storytelling. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and um, and what about your novels? Yeah, I just I just uh, sent a novel to my agent. I have high exp hopes, high hopes that it'll be published. You never know. Um, so I've yeah, every year I write a novel in NaNoWriMo. Um, I I would say I get made like at most two good ideas a year. <laughs> this is my slow writing, I think, <laughs> but I always get like one, mm. and so um, it's a good pace for me because I'd be very frustrated if I was just sitting around with with 10 novels who, that hadn't been written. And so now I have four or five that I've written in Nano, during NaNoWriMo that are in a, in a drawer, you know? And so now that I sent off this one novel, which I wrote in NaNoWriMo just two years ago, I'll open the drawer and get the next one out and start revising it soon. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's so good. It's always lovely to, you know, you obviously love your job job as well as what your job is about, yeah. which is, is really lovely. Um, okay, so tell us where can people find you and NaNoWriMo and all this stuff online? Yeah, so NaNoWriMo is NaNoWriMo.org. Um, you can find everything through NaNoWriMo.org. We have links to here. I'm going to pull it up just because I always forget URLs, but um yeah, so nanorimo.org and um, camp. Let me get the, the exact URL. Just double check here. But I always just click on things. So uh, the Young Writers Program is ywp.nanorimo.org. Um, and you can all just, also just search for these things, obviously. Mm. And then camp nanorimo is campnanorimo.org. And then uh, me, I'm at uh, grantfaulkner.com. You can just search Grant Faulkner on Google. You'll, you'll stumble across me somewhere in there. I'm on Twitter at, at Grant Faulkner. Uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm, there are only about five Grant Faulkners in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, who, who are writing. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time, Grant. That was great. Absolutely. Thank you. This was so fun.